Shalom, Shalom everyone. In this video, we're going to just jump right into things in Daniel chapter 3. Not that there wasn't anything in the prior chapters, I just wanted to start at chapter 3. So we're going to be discussing the difference and starting from verse 1 in the KJV. And it reads, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. So basically we have the king erecting this statue in Babylon. But let, let's just continue on the Septuagint. And it reads, in, in the 18th year, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made a golden image. Its height was 60 cubits, and breadth 6 cubits. He, and he set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. So the only uh, real difference that I, that I noticed when I was reading that or going over it is that the one in the Septuagint actually gave a time when this situation happened. Now my question is, is, is that an important piece? Put it in the comments and let me know if that's an important piece or if it's just something that can just be overlooked. Now the reason why I think it is an important piece, now pause it if you need to, and write yes or no or whatever you might want to do in the, in the comments but whenever you go to chapter 1 and verse 1 it starts it says in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it Daniel 2 and verse 1 says in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams where wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. You go to Daniel chapter 7 um, and verse 1. In the year, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his, of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. So, is it important? It seems like often within Daniel and you see even within the book of Esther, that it often goes in to giving a timeline but in verse 1 of chapter 3 it does it in the uh, Hebrew text but it does within the Greek so is it important or no let me know so we continue on to the three Hebrew boys after not bowing to the statue that the king uh, erected before the king ordered them to be thrown into the fire so which brings us to verse 22 and it reads therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot the flames of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego so what we have here the king giving out a message the furnace was hot and that furnace I guess the um, the men that he they had appointed to throw uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Abednego in were, were killed by the fire because it was too hot. But let's go to the Septuagint. And it reads, For as much as the king's word, word prevailed, the furnace was made exceeding hot. And that's pretty much all, that it, all well, that is all that it says. So my question is, what happened to the, to the men who were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Is the Septuagint fragmented? Why is that not there? Let me know what you think in the comments. But let's continue on to verse 23. And it reads, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. I'm almost sure that it was hot in there. But let's go straight to the Septuagint. I want you guys to see this. Then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the midst of the burning furnace and walked in the midst of the flame, singing praise to God and blessing the Lord. Has anyone ever heard anything about them singing in the fire? I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense. You got Daniel and the lions then. You got all these other different situations. I mean, why not the fire not touch him? This is something 
that was brought out to me um, while speaking to a few brothers. I think it was Brother uh, John, uh, Tobiah, and Brother Richard as we were discussing the Septuagint. And they brought out a book in the, in the Apocrypha called The Prayer of Azariah. Check out what it reads in chapter 1, verse 25 through 27. And it reads, But the angel of the Lord came down into the oven together with Azariah and his fellows, and smote the flame of the fire out of the oven, and made the mist of the furnace as it had been a moist whistling wind, so that the fire touched them not at all, neither hurt nor troubled them. Then the three, as out of one mouth, praised, glorified, and blessed God in the furnace. So it seems as if the prayer of Azariah connects completely with the Septuagint in that instance. It, it says that they began to sing and give praise to the Most High. As well as the Apocrypha says that they went and pray, gave praise to the Most High. Well, let's continue to verse 24, and it reads, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Let's go to Septuagint. And it reads, And Nebuchadnezzar heard them singing praises, and he wandered. And rose up in haste, and said to his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they said to the king, Yes, O king. So my question here is, in the KJV it says, And Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and rose up in haste. Now, could he see from wherever he was into the furnace, the, the three Hebrew boys, that was supposedly supposed to be burning or from the uh, from the situation of the Septuagint did he hear them and was amazed I think the singing praises was taking taken out possibly of the uh, KJV or the Hebrew text the singing praise and then he was like wait a minute how in the world and then he rose up in haste and when he got there, he saw not only them, but he saw an angel. Anywho, let me know what you think in the comments. Shalom.